Welcome back to Tony's Technician's channel and today on Tech Tip Tuesday we're going to be going into disc brake operation and how it works. I'm going to show you the components of it. I'm going to take apart uh, one of the sides on my Camaro so you guys can get an idea and I can show you the parts and then I'll try and include some photos to get you better ideas of what I'm talking about. Uh, so we're going to be moving into kind of the hydraulic system of the brakes and how they operate and what actually stops the vehicle. So I really hope you guys enjoy. It's pretty simple. It's going to be a pretty quick video, but I really hope you guys do enjoy and I, I hope you find it informative. Uh, but if you enjoy, please make sure to hit that thumbs up, leave a comment down below, and as always, subscribe if you're not a subscriber. Thank you guys. Hey YouTubers, so here you can see I had the vehicle jacked up and it's on jack stands and I had the wheel removed. This is your brake assembly for the disc brakes. And before we get into the components of that, I also want to get into the master cylinder, brake booster, and reservoir. Uh, but on how the hydraulic system works or anything like transmissions or brakes, they all work off of Pascal's law, which basically just states that uh, a pressure change occurring anywhere in the confined area of the fluid is transmitted throughout whatever it's sealed in equally. So everywhere you will get equal force but you can also multiply force and that's what the brake system does. Um, first we're going to get into just a real quick how this operates. Uh, so the brake booster basically boosts the pressure from when you're stepping on the brake. In here you have your reservoir and this has pistons in it which allow fluid to be transferred to or through all of your brake lines and to all of your brakes. So when you step on the brake pedal it is boosted and the pistons move allowing fluid to be pushed through the lines and to your brakes and then when you get to the brakes it is multiplied well we'll get into that once I get the brakes uh, disassembled but I'll show you how it is multiplied and uh, now we're gonna get into the basic components on how the disc brakes work Okay, YouTubers, so when looking at your disc brake system, you'll either have a hub, the rotor separate, your caliper, and your mounting points. Um, but this is a hub style rotor, so the hub is included. This all rotates with the wheel. Where the hubless version, you will have your hub independent from your rotor, which is this part right here, which your brake pads actually clamp onto. So this is the hub style, so it's all one unit. And then you have your caliper, which encases your brake pads, your piston that applies the force to the brake pads. And what I'm going to do real quick is remove these two pins in order to remove the caliper from its mounts. Uh, but for a third gen Camaro, I believe they are all 3 8 Allen keys, just one here and one down here. So I'm going to go ahead and do that now, and I will show you the components inside of the caliper. So I've removed these pins, which hold your caliper to your bracket or mounting bracket you will come across many different styles uh, this is just one style also keep in mind that there are floating calipers and there are fixed there are also single and multi-piston calipers uh, multi-piston are more used on heavy duty or uh, sports cars and then the most common are your single piston but we're moving into more pistons now because Granted, you don't multiply the force as much because you're using smaller pistons in your caliper, but it does distribute the force more equally across your brake pads. But to remove this, you just simply pull it out, and here you have your brake line that goes to your caliper. And your brake pads sit in here. But I'm going to go ahead and remove those. They will have different... Uh, brackets and stuff that hold the pads on. I don't even need to remove the outside one. Um, but you guys can see here, you can see right here on the back, we have one large piston. And on the piston, you will have a seal to keep contaminants out. And on the inside, you will have a square cut seal. So when the piston comes in and out, or when it comes out to apply the brakes, and you release the brake pedal, the square cut seal will deform it a little bit and actually pull the piston back inside the caliper. Here you have your bleeder screw for bleeding the brakes. Also, another thing with Pascal's law, you have to make sure there's no leaks in the system in order to get that good force. And one thing, liquids are not compressible. Air 
is. So if you have air in your lines, you will have a spongy feeling to it. So I don't want to set this down, but here you have your rotor and your hub, which I already spoke of, but your rotor is the main purpose of it is to actually stop the vehicle. And it does that by the means of the brake pads being clamped onto it by the force of the piston, which the piston gets its force from the brake reservoir. So I've kind of went over how the master cylinder reservoir and brake booster operate. Basically its function is to just boost the brake pressure and transmit the force through the lines to your brakes. And here you have your caliper with your brake pads, your piston, which applies the force to the brake pads, and the brake pads clamp onto your rotor slowing down the vehicle. Very simple, pretty easy to understand. Brake systems aren't that different from each other. When you have a uh, multi-piston caliper, you will most likely have a couple on both sides to apply equal force. But with the sliding one, when it applies force, you actually move the caliper back and forth. And as your brake pads wear, your piston will come further and further out and stay further out. And that is why you have a reservoir in order to, because you're gonna be using more fluid. So your fluid might sit lower, but it's gonna take up the slack of your worn brake pads. Uh, so if you look at your reservoir and it's low on fluid, that doesn't mean refill it. It most likely means you need to check your pads to make sure they're not worn down all the way. But pretty simple operation. Okay, YouTubers, so that's basically it. Just a real quick video on kind of the components of the disc brake system and what each component does. Uh, first you have your brake booster, your master cylinder, and your reservoir which boosts brake pressure, uh, transfers the motion, and holds extra fluid for when your brake pads wear down. Uh, then you have the lines that go to each brake, and then when you get there, you have the piston inside the caliper, caliper that compresses the brake pads onto your rotor and slows down the vehicle. So very simple, uh, just a very important part of the vehicle. Uh, you don't want air in the lines, you don't want leaks because those are very deadly situations that you'll find yourself in if you do have those issues. So you always wanna make sure that your brake system is in good condition. But I hope you guys found this informative and I'll try and include, or I should have included some pictures to give you better ideas of the components. So if you guys enjoyed, please make sure to hit that thumbs up, leave a comment down below, and as always, subscribe if you're not a subscriber. Thank you guys.